we're going to start putting materials together and assigning them to our geometry. We won't completely author all the materials right now. It's going to be a little bit hard to test everything because we don't have lights and render settings in the scene just yet, but we can at least get the bones sorted out here. I'm going to start with the mech here, and you can see I've renamed the nodes here just for sake of clarity. So you could do the materials and assign them after the animation's been applied, but to try to mimic a production workflow, uh, typically you'd have a look dev scene where you'd be working with your base mesh in your rest pose here, and you'd be look deving like this, and then animation would get applied per shot. Uh, so I'm going to sort of mimic that here. So I'm going to put down a material library. And you can put it in line, or we can put it off to the side and then merge them together. I think because we are trying to be very simple about how we're building everything, we're just going to do this in line like this. So I have a material library. If I double click, I am now inside of that. And what I want to do is look for a material X subnet. Okay, I'm going to label this one mech. Going to dive inside. And we have a few things in here. We have a surface VOP being plugged into the surface output. We can delete that. We don't need that and a displacement here. What we do need to do is figure out what we want to connect to that surface node. So we're going to use the standard surface here for material X. So material X standard surface, we're going to put that down and take our out and just go right into the sub output there. And our material is going to be very simple. We're, I think we have like four or five texture maps that we're going to bring in. Uh, and we're just going to plug them in, and we're not going to make any modifications in here. So if I type in image, we can bring in a material X image. And it's a good idea to make sure you're using material X nodes when you're in the material X uh, subnetwork here. And they might all... No, they're not all set that way. There are a bunch of other things in here, but typically when you're in the Material X subnetworks, you want to use the Material X nodes here. All right, so we have our image. We are going to find it. So it's going to be in our text. And we have all these mech stuff here. I'm going to turn this off just so you can see. We've got these labels 1001, 1002, 1003. These are UDIM textures. If you turn that on and change that to UDIMs, they're going to display correctly there. So make sure you're doing that. And we want to find base color, mech with UVs, mech base color aces. I should note at this point that I am using the aces color space for my Houdini uh, setup here. I'm not going to go into aces here. It's outside of the scope of this tutorial, but um, Yes, you're going to need to be aware of that if you're trying to replicate exactly what I'm doing. The colors might look a little off if you're not using aces. So the out goes right into our base color. And I'm just going to copy paste that. And we'll find we actually don't have an emissive on here, so we can skip that. I'm going to skip down to metallic. Plug that into metalness. Grab the next one, which is our roughness here. And here we want to find specular roughness. Plug that right in. And then normal. We're not going to use the height in here. We're going to use our normal map. I don't think we need to use displacement for this. You're not really going to see it. There's not a lot of displacement detail in here. So normal is fine. And now normal, you would not plug it directly in to here, you're going to need to actually make sure that Material X understands that that's a normal map that you're plugging in. So if you type normal, there actually is a normal map here, and it just takes in your input and the output goes right into normal. Now we dive up 
And if we look, we see that it's placed the materials right here in the slash materials, but we're going to want them to sit inside this mech folder here. So we're going to manually type shot slash mech slash materials. And now we have materials sitting in there. If I toggle it open, we've got a material for mech. I haven't assigned it yet. There are ways to assign it in here, but I usually prefer to assign it with a separate lob. I use the assign material op here. And what I'm going to do is assign it to every uh, mesh object in here. And I'm going to do this with wildcards. So I'm going to drag my geo into primitives and I'm going to type slash star. So that's saying, give me every primitive that's a child of geo here. And the material path, I'm going to drag in mech. And we see now that the materials have been assigned right in here. If you select one of these, we should be able to see now that there's a material binding. And that tells me what material is assigned to this piece of geo right there. If I turn that off, the material binding should go away. If I turn it on, the material binding is back. So the mech now has materials assigned and it looks exactly like what it should look like. Now let's go ahead and do the environment. We're going to repeat the same kind of setup that we did here and we'll do it on the environment. The reason that we're not doing the materials down here is because I'm looking at uh, potentially portability of the scene. If I do the environment set up as one branch here, we can write that entire branch to a USD file, and then that environment can be reused again, some other place and some other shot, same with our mech. Um, if we do it down here, it's totally fine if this is a one-off shot, then we can just write the entire shot to one USD file. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think a little bit ahead about how we might want to use this in the future. So we'll put down a material library here dive inside and we will look for a material X subnet that will be called mountain one. Delete that out of there. Put down a standard surface, plug that in. And now we just need to hook up our nodes here and it's going to be pretty much the same thing. We're not going to use displacement here. We will save our displacement for the foreground elements where you will really see it. So I'm going to grab a material X image. I'm going to find our mountain one base color, plug that into base color. I'm going to find our roughness here and plug that into specular roughness and then find our normal map. We have no metallic texture, I believe, so we want to make sure metallic is set to zero. And let's go and find our normal map here. We need to do the same thing. We need to tell material X that that is a normal map. So that's mountain one. Mountain two, we will copy paste that. And I believe it should be the same thing. And we'll just change all the ones to twos. I'm going to actually copy paste this for terrain. Now terrain is going to be a different thing and it's going to be special and we'll deal with that once we get some lights in our scene and we can actually render and see our work a little bit better. For now, I'm just going to put an empty material here and we will delete all that stuff out of here. Yeah, we'll just keep an empty material, keep it just like this and we'll assign it as necessary. Now, again, we have our materials in the wrong spot. So I'm going to put that into shot 
slash env slash materials. And there they go. They're down here. And I will assign materials. So I will assign to mountain one, mountain one, add another material here to mountain two, mountain two, and to the terrain. I will assign the terrain. All right, now we will take a look at this branch. And we see that we have the materials on our mountains. We didn't assign any texture maps here, so we're not seeing that, but we're not getting any warnings or any errors, so it looks like the materials are assigned correctly. We'll do the same thing now with atmosphere. So material library. Assign material. We have nothing in here yet. Put down another subnet and we'll call that Atmos. For now, we're going to leave this empty. We're going to do some custom stuff in here uh, because this is a volume. We need to actually set this up as a volume shader but we can assign it though. Uh, let's make sure that it's in the right place, of course. So that's going to be under shot slash Atmos slash materials. And we want to assign that to our volume and grab that. We might get an error because we don't actually have uh, a volume shader in here. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen at the moment when we render it. Uh, if it looks like a problem, we'll just disable this entire branch of the network. Now let's go see everything from our scene camera. Looks like we have materials assigned to everything. We will take a render pretty soon. We'll start setting that up so that we can actually look at what we're doing here with some lights on. And then we can start tweaking some stuff and refining the materials a bit.